uh, we will start the, the next session of our meeting. Uh, we have a change in the program. Uh, Professor Eduardo Massad uh, had another uh, uh, um, meeting uh, at the, the same time, and, and we are trying to move uh, his talk to tomorrow, okay? In this way, we move the talk from Professor Askeri Canabarro, which will, would be at the final talk of this day, uh, to the first one, okay? And then, uh, Professor Askeri Canabarro, uh, thank you very much for accepting to talk in this meeting. And uh, Professor uh, Canabarro is from Federal University of Alagoas and worked also with people from IIT in Natal, okay? And Professor Canabarro will talk about the data-driven study of the COVID-19 pandemic via age-structured modeling and prediction of the health system failure in Brazil amid diverse intervention strategies. Professor Canabarro, thank you very much and please. Yes, um, hi everyone. Um, so this work, uh, it was uh, recently um, put online. Uh, we made a model, a seed-like model, to investigate uh, mailing uh, the failure of the Brazilian system amid uh, diverse intervention scenarios. So this work was done in, uh, uh, the model was conceived, conceived uh, by the physicist, it's me, Askeri, Rafael Chaves, and Samurai from IAP. And uh, with uh, the help of um, many physicians, many doctors. So I put here the medical team, they helped us and uh, understanding better the few pieces we already know about uh, COVID. And uh, here I will be very gentle in a sense to, to show you guys, uh, we maybe have a broad audience. So I make a, a, a brief COVID overview. It's our motivation. Talk about uh, our seed model and uh, how we model it how you modeled the demand for intensive care units. This is the primary goal in our work is to study when the system uh, will suffer a great pressure and collapse eventually. Uh, we talk about uh, how we calibrated the model, how you, you fit the parameters and how you can use data on uh, other counters to, to better uh, model the, the current situation in Brazil. And uh, we wanted uh, to answer if, if a, quarant a quarantine is necessary in Brazil, or if we are prepared to relax the, our social distance. So, and uh, we wanted uh, to answer also if it's necessary and urgent should we do now? What is the ideal time window? Okay. So, I mean, uh, one important aspect is we have this uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. It's the name for this new coronavirus. COVID is the disease. It's important uh, importance to, to make it clear. COVID is the disease associated with this virus. So it's a new strain of coronavirus that uh, uh, has not been previous, previously identified in humans. And uh, coronaviruses are well known to circulate among animals and can eventually infect humans. And from, from this uh, can trigger human-human infection. This is the situation we, we see now. So why is a threat for the health system? Yeah. The main concern is because uh, we don't have a uh, vaccine or any specific treatment for the disease. Uh, it's also tremendously, tremendously uh, transmissible. It seems to be very, very transmissible. Even a symptomatic person can uh, transmit the disease. So as it's a new virus, we don't have an, uh, 
prior immunity. No one. It means that the entire population uh, is susceptible to, to be infected with uh, the virus. And the threat is real. We, when I was uh, writing this slide, it's, uh, it's uh, almost 2 million. Now it's more than 2 million infected and more than uh, 128. When I wrote it, it was 27 and in 10 hours it was uh, 28,000 already. So the, the final important um, motivation is that uh, a considerable percentage of infected persons, they need intensive care unit admission. So we have a pressure for intensive care demand. So this is what we want to model. This is our main, uh, main target in this work. So it's uh, in, a, in a few months, uh, the, the, the virus is spread around the world. It's, uh, it's uh, in fact uh, a worldwide problem right now. And uh, what, what should Brazil do? What uh, we, we have learned from the other countries and we can apply here in the country. So, you know, basically uh, CD model, we have uh, uh, susceptible individuals, infected individuals that can eventually die or recover, become resistant. In our model, we decide to uh, do an approach to separate the, the Brazilian society in, in age groups. So we have, in fact, nine age groups. Group, group one is uh, 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 persons from zero to 90 years old, and then you have 10 to 90 years old, and so on, until you get the last age group uh, with people above uh, 80. So to model well for, uh, your reality, you needed to, to know the, those parameters here. Beta is uh, the, the rate of the probability when a susceptible individual encounters a, a infected individual, this is uh, the death rate, gamma is the death rate, and uh, alpha is the recovery rate. We suppose that uh, once the individual is recovered, uh, it's uh, resistant, it's immune to the disease. So it, it doesn't become uh, infected, uh, uh, susceptible again. Once he is uh, recovered, he's uh, immune, he's resistant. So how do you translate this in a, in a model? Given uh, you have a population of size N, uh, 200 uh, millions in the case of Brazil, the model looks like this. So if uh, uh, anyone is not uh, uh, familiar with uh, this notation, I will, I will briefly explain. Uh, the derivative, this is a, a, variation, uh, a, a variation in time. This is the velocity this quantity varies. So here we are saying, the, the same thing again, that when we encounter S, encounter an I individual, it can become uh, infected. So the variation of the population tends to decrease. It's good to, to mention now that when you have this kind of model, you, you are modeling the very beginning of the disease, when basically S, S is the size of N because you, you assume that you have just a few amount of infected persons and then S is basically N. So this, this, this decreases with time. And uh, we are for sure neglecting uh, uh, born rate and uh, death rates uh, according to all the kinds of disease. It's just modeling the spread propagation and uh, of uh, COVID, okay? Uh, G here is the following. As we don't have any vaccine or any specific treatment, treatment for the disease, you need to isolate those susceptible individuals from contacting 
with infected individuals. Because the contagion is human human, and it, you don't have a vaccine, so you need to isolate them. So G represents the control measurements, what uh, you can find in the literature as non-pharmaceutical interventions. It's what we can do. For example, we, you can do nothing and let uh, the, the population uh, uh, behave with the same dynamics of, uh, as if the disease was not uh, happening. Or you can uh, to drastically reduce the dynamics of the population with uh, quarantine, trying to, to reduce these contagions. So this is what uh, probably uh, we must uh, do in Brazil to stop the disease. And we show that we have a very narrow window before the damage is already done. So here, when uh, you become infected, you, you increase by the same amount than the infected can uh, uh, recover or can die. If they recover, they increase with the same amount, the quantity of uh, uh, recovered individuals. And when you die, you have exactly the this, this same amount. This, you have a conservation of uh, individuals. So as I, I told you guys, uh, I represent our Asia groups. It's gonna be clear in, in a bit. So apart from that, we decided to, to add another variable to our system. It's the ICU demand. The quantity, the number of beds, the number of intensive care units that we need over time. So this is, this is a, only to model the quit call attention, okay? So our model consists in fact of these five equations uh, coupled. Why you did that? Why we decided to, be, to make this uh, stratification by age? Because many data, many epidemiological data have shown that uh, the disease uh, has different uh, dynamics among different age groups. So this is a, a population pyramid of Brazil. If you don't uh, uh, make a distinction between male and female, and then you have uh, basically here, if you multiply this percentage by the total number of, uh, of individuals in the population, you get the number of susceptible individuals. Because in the beginning of the infection, it's supposed that basically everybody is susceptible. Uh, here, it's, uh, this is census data. This is demographic data. This is the pencil, this, this amount is the percentage in this population who is uh, in school or university. So in Brazil, currently you have this scenario of uh, closed schools and uh, schools and universities. So you can model how this measure affect by saying how many from this population it could protect. Okay, so this is going to be clear in a bit also. So. As I told you, G is uh, the, the parameter that models this governmental intervention, this control measurement. So by one, uh, this, is, this, this is the amount, one is the fraction of the population who is uh, protected with the measure. So if you do nothing, you protect no one. So everybody is exposed. On the other hand, we show that if you, impose uh, intensive quarantine, protecting 75% of the people, you let 25% uh, susceptible, exposed to the, to the infection. This is uh, the amount that we are currently needing in Brazil. What you have done so far probably is not enough. We, we're gonna show that it's, we have done a, a, a good job, but it's not uh, enough yet. So here is how we uh, construct the, the fusion, considering only close the school university. Here is social distance, distancing of uh, people over 60 years old. 
And here is the more or less the current scenario that we have of a voluntary home quarantine. Um, we're gonna show why 50% uh, in, a, in a moment. So uh, when you construct your model, you, you have to calibrate and initiate, you, you have to impose the initial conditions. So the initial condition for us was the situation, the infectious uh, situation, the infect infectious uh, status uh, on March, on 21 uh, of March. So at that time we had almost 1000 cases, confirmed the cases and uh, around 20 deaths. Why we, we did that? Uh, why it was the approach? Well, what was the approach? We would like to calibrate the model and test the model. When we did this, it was uh, near uh, April 2. So we would have 10 data to calibrate your data and test your, your model. So we can uh, also calibrate and test the model. So we use uh, uh, the end of uh, the, the data uh, in the rest of March to test our model. So uh, this was the, the distribution of dead at that time. So we collect this data. Uh, this is an important parameter. This is not uh, possible to retrieve this data with the Brazilian uh, current status of the disease because we have uh, uh, so far few cases. And at the time of writing of the paper, we had even fewer cases. We, we had uh, around 4,000 cases. So this is the fatality rate per age group. Uh, the average uh, fatality between China and Italy because at that moment, it was the uh, most robust data that we had. And this is the percentage per age group that from the infected individual who needed admission in ICUs, in intensive care units. So this is, this is very important uh, to us. And we are assuming that in Brazil, in the long run, we will achieve at least this, uh, uh, more or less the same distribution. Why it's a, a, a suitable assumption is because uh, even uh, in a developed country the, where people have uh, uh, access to water supply, waste supplies, good, um, uh, basically no housing uh, deficits. And the situation is even worse in Brazil. So. This first is basically a lower bound, what we expect for, for the Brazilian case. Um, okay. So basically for the construction of the model, we have uh, all these parameters. We had uh, these epidemiological parameters we could use uh, from uh, other countries. Uh, this parameter is related to the R0, which is the basic reproduction uh, number, which is a very important number in an uh, epidemiological model. It says roughly uh, how many new infector, infected persons are one individual, one infected individual is, uh, is propagating. Yeah? So for example, R equal three, it says that uh, on average, one infected person is contaminating three others. So it's the only parameter that we fit. We, we had to, to see the case. It will, it will vary drastically from, uh, from uh, condition to condition, from, from countries to countries. So you have to calibrate this. So as I mentioned, T0 for us is uh, March 21. So we, we model the data uh, uh, until here, and here is the prediction of the data in uh, the blue line, the blue curve, and uh, uh, the orange are the data points. We can see that uh, 
here it's uh, 10 days from uh, March 21, uh, here it's uh, 31 uh, of March. So you can see that uh, uh, the modeling was uh, really performing well. And uh, as mentioned by, by Jose Diaz in the, in the morning talk, uh, from now on, when the disease, the, the, the disease, disease spread, it's impossible to, to track this quantity here because you have a, a sub notification that the number of uh, infected uh, confirmed the case, it's, it's uh, much below the, the real number. Why? Uh, it's it's uh, when the disease is spread, you, you, you have no boundaries where the disease can be. So the only way to, to have a real number is to test, to mass test, to make a, 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 a really huge amount of test exam. It's not uh, feasible. So we rely in modeling with the number of deaths because he, he, we suppose that the notification is more or less uh, much, much better, closer to, to reality. So, the main question is how how is the situation in Brazil? How was the situation in Brazil at the time we modeled the system? I, I can show you guys quickly here how we end up with that number. There is this tool. Uh, this is the Google Mobility tool that we can uh, see the situation of uh, of some countries. Let's show here. This is the this is this was in April. Uh, uh, five, we, if you take the average of this, uh, you say that uh, near places near retail recreation, uh, the decrease uh, in movement was 67%, here near farmers uh, parking, uh, then you can take the average of this. Naturally, the, the residential um, uh, mobility increased. Uh, then you can take the average and you can say, okay, in Brazil, you have reduced the mobility by half. That was the current scenario. That was, if they, they, there is also this another tool here that uh, you can see by state. And then if you take the average, you, you, you can see that our social distance, it's close, it's still close to, to 50%. Is this enough? The, this is the question that we, we answer now. This is the current, the current scenario. Considering all the, the, the parameters that I showed you guys, we could uh, model the current scenario. You can see that you, 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 we probably will have uh, um, tens of millions of infected people. And uh, of simultaneously, simultaneously. And uh, this is a problem. Even if the percentage of person that need critical treatment is low, as this number is high, we can saturate. Okay, so, but one question we have to, to ask, uh, have you done a, a good job so far or not? This is the scenario, if would, we wouldn't have done anything by the moment that we, we had a, a 10 deaths. So you see that we, we would have been in a very bad situation. This blue line here is the same as this blue line. So for comparison, you can see that here you have uh, uh, in the order of millions, and then here you have in the order of uh, 50, 60 millions of infected people. And this black line is saying that uh, if you relax now, at, at the time we wrote it, uh, if you would uh, relax our um, isolation measures in uh, if we release people, relax uh, completely. So we would have this scenario. So it's clear that uh, uh, relaxing the, the control measurement is, no, is, no, is not the way. But the, the question we would like to, to, to answer is that, is this current uh, scenario enough to protect the health system? and minimize the number of deaths. Okay. Yeah, uh, before I answer this question, I will show you, I just did this graph with uh, the data we had until yesterday. This is, uh, I plotted the case of uh, Brazil 
uh, against China, Spain, Italy, and the US. So the, the white line is this, this white line is the case where the, the number of deaths, here's the log scale. In Y, you have a log scale. Here's the number of deaths uh, number of death doubling each seven days. He, this white line is when it double, doubles in 14 days and this when it doubles in 21 days. So we can see that probably those measurements, those uh, controlled measurements that I just showed you guys was responsible to Brazil is the orange line to change the trend uh, in Brazil to double uh, every seven days to approach uh, a scenario like uh, this one when it will double uh, double the number of deaths in, in, in 14 days. So what, what we should do now in this exact moment in the current scenario, we have to, to try to achieve this tendency of, of the China curve. So it's not safe to get to this, uh, to this trend and then uh, impose more uh, strict uh, quarantine. This is, this is this answer why we are in a hurry. Yeah, if I, if I, I if you let me, by this projection, if you do nothing, we probably will get a, a peak around the, the end of, of May. Uh, this is the prediction of our model. And uh, this is low increase is about uh, to finish. So the damage will uh, appear suddenly. So we have a very narrow time window to act and now, now, ideally this week, at most next week, we have to enhance the quarantine. Why? Okay, uh, there is a tool available. It's a, I, I will show you guys. There is a tool for checking uh, the number of, uh, the number of, uh, total number of uh, intensive care units in Brazil. And uh, these, this was, this data was, data was retrieved uh, up to February of this year. So it's a, it's a, a new data and it models, it, it models, it's, it retrieves the number of uh, ICU beds that we have two months ago. So not all of this, not all of this is uh, available for, for you to use. We have uh, uh, a number of uh, occupants around eight, eight, five percent. This was uh, a report by, by the national agents of uh, national agents of health that we, the, the occupancy, it, 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 it's always high. So, Apart from that, you have to exclude the, the number of beds for newborns. You cannot uh, uh, use that. Uh, you cannot remove babies and uh, put a child uh, or, or adults, obviously. So the situation is this. We have uh, around 14,000 uh, um, uh, beds and one, uh, one uh, free height of about 15%. So we end up with this total number. But even if we were very strict with this measurement, even if it's in fact 8,000, it's gonna crash soon. So how do you, how do you uh, change the, this tendance, uh, the tendency of this curve? You only achieve this with a certain margin of a vacancy if we impose a quarantine of uh, about 75%. So this was uh, our simulation is starting the quarantine uh, on April 11. So probably you are here, we are here right now. So you, we are in a very narrow window to act uh, to protect the system. And this is the primary uh, message of uh, our, our work. So uh, 
I just check if the model is still uh, predicting well. And sadly, it is still predicting well. This is data up to yesterday. This, uh, the model was uh, conceived and calibrated here, and it is still giving, um, I, I mean, uh, uh, a prediction with a higher occurrence, which is bad, which is saying that we basically didn't change anything. So again, I have to say, as uh, Jose Diaz said uh, in the morning talk, we are relying on, uh, on deaf data because it's uh, more closer to reality. So this is urgent. This is really urgent because uh, if you don't do anything, if you, you keep in uh, the current scenario, you can reach a uh, uh, hundred of thousands of, of, of deaths, of, uh, of deaths. So if you change, if you absolutely relax your, your control measurement, the, the, the number increase a lot. If you just uh, uh, close a school university, the numbers, it's still high. If you just do social distance of uh, 60 years old, people above 60 years old, it's still so high. If you keep a voluntary quarantine, uh, with open school, it's still so high. The only way you can uh, minimize, uh, uh, radically minimize, drastically minimize the number of deaths is by impose a quarantine of, uh, with a level of a compliance level with the population uh, complying to the measurement uh, of um, 75%. So as a, a final remark, uh, we have to say that we have done a good job so far, but it's probably not enough. As, uh, as was, it was mentioned, uh, every model uh, is uh, wrong by nature. When you conceive a model, it's a simplification. Just by, creation, uh, by creating the model, you, you have errors. And uh, we also need uh, reliable data to calibrate uh, our model. So, we have a lot of uh, error implicit included in our models in a sense that every model is wrong to some extent. But uh, as it was mentioned, uh, they are useful. They are useful. Even if uh, the confidence interval is, is big, it's, it still gives you the, the average of the trend. So this is a stress that uh, an intense uh, quarantine is justifiable and urgent in Brazil because you have to act before the damage is done. The damage is when the damage is in and uh, the, this will be, I mean, this will be uh, at to some extent useless to protect the, the health system. And by protection the health system, you minimize the number of deaths just by COVID and by some other disease. So suitable level is around 75% so that you can give some vacant uh, margin for you for the health system. And uh, even if uh, our model is just an epidemiological model, yeah, it's clear that uh, as we don't have uh, any uh, vaccine or any uh, treatment, the only solution to protect the, the, the suitables, the susceptibles individuals uh, by imposed quarantine. This, is have, uh, this has social economical implications. Of course it has, but it seems that no country can minimize both variables at the same time. No country will uh, be uh, capable of minimize the economic damage and the number and minimize the number of deaths and the protect the health system at the same time. So this is, is uh, the, the, the main remark we, we'd like to stress. And uh, this is available on our MedChive, this, this work. Of course, uh, this is a time in that we, we are relying on science. This is the time as uh, the, all human race is relying on science to get rid of this disease, so you have to, to thanks our supporters 
uh, once again. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers and uh, I'm open uh, for questions. That's all. Thank you, Astrid. Askiri, for, for your very clear presentation. We have, uh, okay, first of all, we have a, a, a question for, from uh, YouTube. Uh, Rodrigo Soares is asking that group you presented is only considering the official deaths. Is this right? Uh, this is, uh, you mean uh, when we fit this? Or when mm -hmm. you have uh, okay yes yes because uh, we we are we, we discussed it today in the morning uh, the question of uh, underreporting it it means that the the number of deaths are the number of uh, people uh, uh, mentioned died uh, uh, by the covid covid yes. is it correct Yes, this is all only official data. This data that you have in uh, John Hopkins uh, University Repository or, or Worldometer, uh, we know that probably we have uh, uh, persons uh, who died uh, with COVID, and we don't know. Of course, it, it can be a other uh, lower bound. For example, yeah, yeah, yes. I am asking because, for example, in São Paulo, I think that uh, last week, about sixteen thousand people uh, was uh, uh, waiting the test, the results of the testing. You know? and then and then from from the sixteen thousand people, I, I think that about two hundred people have died, and then people is dying before the testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we are dealing with, uh, probably in every scenario, we are dealing with uh, uh, sub-notifications. Mm -hmm. We all, our prediction is a lower bound. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a, a drastic prediction, it is still not the worst case scenario. You, you see it, uh, because uh, we, we, we only can fit the data we have at hand. So this is a, a lower bound. Uh, I ask if someone has uh, questions. Uh, questions? Américo? Yeah. Posso fazer uma pergunta aí? Of course. Of course. Sorry, I should speak in English. Oh, nice talk, Cascari. Very nice. Eh? Thanks a lot for that. Uh, my first question is somehow related with the first one, uh, in the sense that you are using the official uh, number of death. But is, is that what you are using to calibrate your model? I have, it's a two, two questions, in fact. You are using only the death to, cal to calibrate your model, or you, are you also using the confirmed cases? Yeah, we use both. Uh, we yeah, use both, both because in, in, in the very beginning of, uh, of the disease, we, we had a good uh, notification. No? Because when you have uh, 10, 100, uh, 200 cases, it's still trackable. And that, if you see here, the DEF, uh, the, using the DEF data, we could get uh, R0 around three. three yeah. And uh, with uh, the infected data, we could get uh, 2.9. So my, my second question is the following. Uh, you have, you, in your model, you are not distinguishing between asymptomatic and symptomatic. Notified and or notified, doesn't matter. And, uh, and uh, there is this report from China, it's a science paper, uh, which says that uh, the, if you do that, when they calibrated their model according to a huge amount of data, they, they found out that the asymptomatic ones uh, uh, are less contagious in a, in a rate of 55% of the uh, symptomatic one. So what do, you th what do you think it would happen with your predictions? Would you underestimate the data Uh, the date for uh, the collapse of the health system, or would you overestimate it? If you consider yeah. this uh, subcontagious uh, yeah. rate, what do you think? If you, I mean, uh, if you, you have uh, two ways to look at this. One way is that, uh, okay, if you, if you, if you have uh, a symptomatic case, but confirm the case, this is different. Yes, I mean, yes. okay, if it's, 
asymptomatic, but confirm the case, it will, it will mean that uh, we you overestimated your R0. Yes, sir. But if it's a asymptomatic, uh, unconfirmed case, you are saying that uh, your 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 number of infected is still it's even higher. Okay. You see, so yes. you can uh, virtually uh, you are virtually decreasing, and then you are underestimating. Underestimating, so it's tricky. So yeah. it's it's a uh, it's tricky. Uh, to answer this, uh, it, it depends. On, I, I didn't uh, read uh, this paper, but uh, I mean, for me, it's clear that if you if it's confirmed, you underestimate. It. If it's uh, if it's uh, unconfirmed, you you overestimate. It. Thank you very much. We we are waiting, Marcelo. Uh, Marcelo is trying to connect, and uh, we we just are waiting him to connect. I have a question then, and then. Please do it. Askeri, thank you very much. This quite nice talk, very interesting thank indeed. You. And um, I'm, I'm looking at this graph, Zach, I was going to ask you this exact graph you put in now, comparing the countries and assuming by what we know on the description of the disease and particularly in Brazil, is more likely that you are underestimating the, the rates of the, the, the progressing rates of this disease. And this is particularly interesting because it's showing you you are, as you said, in a cross line between doing the right or the wrong. Yeah. And eventually, while I'm asking you this, the Minister of Health is being fired by the president. So we may finish this talk today without Ministry of, of Health and with a change in this policy. Uh, then my question is not on the model, but it is in the entrance of this model in this society. How far have you managed to make this information be translated to this society, make it circulated among the organized society, governments and politicians, uh, or politicians which are fighting against this, some of the governors? How, how much are the capability of your group to make this information to go ahead? Yeah. We tried a lot and we managed nothing. We just put this in the our model. We put in the hands of lots, of lots of people and lots of important people, and we have no feedback from them. How are you feeling about making this information changing uh, policies in Brazil? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, on our side, in the first moment that we had this result, uh, we decided to write directly. I I wrote directly to Mandetta to Alcolumbre and to Maya, the, the, mm -hmm. the president of the camera of the uh, Senate, uh, Senate and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. camera, camera of the deputies. Okay, uh, with no success, we are saying that, okay, we have this result, so we still have uh, three weeks of window and blah, blah, blah. So I decided to, to uh, explain this, this model. I, I, I tried to, to mm -hmm. show to, Ufal Federal University of Alagoas, they made a good report. We created a, a, a Insta, uh, um, YouTube presentation saying this in Portuguese because, okay, we wrote in English because we, we, we think that our model is uh, uh, customizable to other regions or countries and so on and so ever. But we want this message to, to reach the population. Because, okay, even if the government says, go out, even if we can yes. pass this message on, yes. even if we can self-organize, we can self-organize, yes. we, can, we can stay at home uh, the most we, we can. Because this, this, the human being, we are gregarious. We, uh, we want to be in society. Staying home is not uh, natural. So this message has to pass to people and say, okay, let's, even if, by chance, they, they, they say, okay, we are good to relax the measures, but the population can still read this message. It's good, it's a good question. You have to make this as, I mean, as uh, penetrable as possible. Yesterday, when uh, this was in Portuguese, online, uh, people from BBC, BBC contact me, people from uh, local, uh, TV, uh, a local TV, and uh, I was 
good to say, okay, we, we, it's still a model, it's still a prediction. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are in a problem right now that the only solution is isolation, that the only solution is quarantine. We don't have medicine, we don't have vaccine. So this is message it has to be really crystal clear. I, I believe I believe the population, the Brazilian society, can organize themselves to stay home as far as they don't lose their jobs. And the thing is, unless the mayors of the cities and the governors keep the politician the policy for for closing down, for isolation, and then the policy for paying people and preventing the the, the lost jobs in the process, you'll be it, it doesn't matter. People will work knowing they're going to be exposed and, and under risk because if, if you lose the capability to retain people by social um, uh, process that keep them eating or paying their, their bills, they will not work, I'm afraid. But yeah. yeah, we're doing the same. We're just saying everybody, but it's, it's quite frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. I, I get no message back from none of them. I wrote a very clear email and I say this, okay, it's still a model, but we should take care, there's no time. Because we model Brazil as a, 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 single, a single place. It's not the case. We have more vulnerable states. You see that this, this underestimation for Brazil can be a, uh, uh, even a, uh, a bad, very bad, uh, underestimation for, for poor states. For example, in Alagoas, we have 100 beds for 100 seats. We have one bed per seat. I mean, it's even uh, more problematic. So you know, Brazil is not uh, the same. The, the, the dynamics and uh, the, yeah. the reaches are, are not well distributed. And we, we, we have a, even a maybe a, a worse scenario for some states. I have heard that uh, Amazonas is, is, is in a very bad shape. They, they don't have a ICU. So guys, uh, I have to interrupt you because uh, I, I asked if Marcelo, Marcelo sent me a message saying that he is now connected, but I cannot see him. I have and, a question uh, to Alexandre. So should I close here? I can... Uh, Yes, please close and uh, ask it to close. Yes, Turn. but I'm asking if Marcelo, Marcelo told me that he is now here, but I'm not seeing here. Hello? Marcelo. 